Hello, everyone at the New Zhan Taiwan Dev Zero NYC Hackathon. Uh, I'm Audrey Tong, and I'm very happy to share with you for about 10 minutes um, some of my thoughts as a participant um, in the GovZero community. And uh, the first thing that you'll notice is that the slides um, is says that this is uh, written by Bo Ming Wu. And uh, indeed, I've not even checked with Bo Ming whether it's okay uh, to use his slides, which took um, place about uh, a day ago. Um, because it was CC licensed. And um, the entire idea of a Creative Commons license is that um, slides like this and talk like this and photos and things that we do in the GovZero community are free for any non-specific people to use. And so this is how we reduce the frictions in our community by just essentially donating uh, exactly what we have thought at this point and for other people to carry on. I think this is the most important spirit in the GovZero uh, community. And so using Bormin slides, uh, I would like to share with you um, some of my thoughts of the GovZero community, which has existed in various uh, projects in various forms since late 2012. And um, back in 2012, there was this advertisement called the Economic Boosting Plan that says basically that the government knows everything and it's impossible to explain it to ordinary citizens. So the ordinary citizens should just follow um, what the government has ordained and stop questioning it. And indeed, we see a lot of so-called ordinary citizens here. And there was a grand plan and um, the impossibility to understand all those various different matrix like um, policy issues um, listed in the film. And uh, the key insight that GovZero people uh, started um, when CL and Kobe and CA and OPOP uh, formed the first uh, reaction was that maybe the problem is not the problem of the citizens. Maybe it's the problem of the vehicle of communication. Maybe it was just those words themselves are unfriendly or too expert-like. Maybe if we change it into something interactive, something visualized, something fun, and then people would have um, the ability to engage with it. So uh, it started as an intervention of IT technologies on public issues. But as uh, we're working on the projects uh, that follows, uh, we've discovered that it's not just um, coders and it's not just designers. We need people who are good at storytelling to tell an engaging story of why you should care or why you can care about this kind of thing. And we need professional um, people working on the images, on the photography, on the film directing, in order to tell a coherent story uh, over different places and different gatherings. We need people specializing in all those different issues, some from the civil society organizations um, who have already put a lot of effort into gathering the different stakeholders' views on a topic. And finally, we need designers. We need designers not in the sense of designing a web page, but having a coherent vision of how people who should um, engage and who can engage in a kind of what we call uh, interaction design. So, um, and we're all very new to this. I mean, uh, when I joined the GovZero movement um, early 2013, uh, I'm a reasonably good uh, coder and a reasonably good writer, but other than that, um, I don't really have any experience with design, with the issues, with photography, and with uh, making movies like this. Uh, as I said, I, I learned all this uh, by participating and by uh, discovering the needs that a particular project uh, needs. And magically, GovZero, by gathering people every two months, every month, every week, we uh, encounter people who are good at things that we're not good at yet. And, and so we can learn from them. And conversely, we can show them uh, what we have learned and that everybody forms a learning community and learns for the better. So in, in many cases, this kind of uh, like budget visualization, budget.gov0.tw, um, the voting guide, which lists all the campaign donation records and all the voting records of all the legislators, uh, the Moya dictionary, a multilingual dictionary that cr cross um, links the um, Taiwanese languages and the English and German and French and so on. 
um, and every other project basically that was listed here. Um, and this is the real time um, emergency unit um, listing of the current status of the, all the ICUs um, of the major hospitals. All these are, are excuses. All these are what we call um, projects that for us to, to fall into. And within this uh, project or within this gap between uh, you know what exists and what we think should exist, uh, there is sufficient room for many, many people. And within this room, people learn to each other. And the ethos, uh, the value that binds us together is um, reflected in the motto. Uh, don't ask why nobody does this. First, admit that you're that nobody, because nobody is perfect. Um, so nobody is perfect, but if we all admit that we're all nobodies, and then we together makes it perfect. And so uh, the main gathering place uh, is places like this, is a hackathon space. In a hackathon, uh, we take one or two days and pitch some ideas in group, and then work, and report what, what we have worked on. And this is a kind of sprint that we try to make something. But that something doesn't have to be uh, entirely done in the one or two day frame. Usually, we start with asynchronous, that is to say, online discussions before the event, and then just encounter more people who haven't heard of these online discussions yet, and try to recruit them, which is what we call tweikeng. And then uh, we open up everything. So even though we have just made, you know, initial attempts or just uh, not great strides, but, but little explorations that may not actually work uh, during the one or two days because everything is open source, at least people wouldn't have to um, rediscover the, the, all the facts people can build upon uh, what we have worked on. And even more importantly, people can know that, okay, these are the five people who really care about this topic. So if I want to work on this topic next, I know who to contact. So the modification and the distribution, plus this time-based events that every two months we're bound to have a, a event that gathers more than 100 people, um, gives people a, a kind of safety net that you don't have to finish anything uh, in one or two days. And anything that, that's unfinished is a plus uh, to the community is in the comments. And so um, we start with self introductions, we start with pitches, and we start with food. And most of the um, cost of the hackathon are actually goes into the food because it's every month or every two months. And a few weeks after the event, maybe you won't remember what projects you have uh, encountered, but you will remember the great food that you have shared with people. And maybe through that memory, you can think back of the people and think of, of uh, oh, so that is the, the cause that they care about. And so this is a, a positive reinforcement through um, very base <laughs> instinct that is uh, gourmet food. And so um, this is a marathon uh, in a sense that it takes a very, very long path, a long road to push any project toward completion. And each hackathon is like one stop in, in this, where we gather even more people uh, to run together. And so key to this element is to throw something up, to throw something uh, unfinished, to be um, shameless, to uh, share something imperfect, because that's um, things are, that are perfect cannot draw people in. It's only because things that are imperfect that you can draw people in because then they have something to contribute. Um, so this is the, the public spirited part in the GovZero community in the sense that we're all public citizens and we, we just donate our time, our efforts, our talents in order to make something better. And then we add to it um, this kind of hands-on imperative in the sense that if you see something that needs doing, um, instead of asking who might be the best person to do this, um, just just do it, even though you might not be the best person to do this. Um, at least you can make some initial contributions. And people who are much better uh, at this, people who are much more professional, uh, will then see you doing this and say, oh, but 
but this is not the, the right way of doing things. This is the formal professional way. But if you haven't started, uh, then the professional people wouldn't even discover the cause. So in, in this sense, you're the channel between the professional community and the social issues that need uh, to be solved or to be um, cared upon. And finally, we all use open source, uh, open culture, free culture licenses. Uh, that is to say, uh, licenses like the MIT license, uh, like the GPL license for code, and then a uh, license like the Creative Commons uh, for the um, non-code parts of a every project. And because that we use open source model for this, any actions that's born out of this public spirit are accumulative, meaning that they're there for people to um, continue to modify, just like the way that I'm now uh, making a modified work out of PM5 slides. And then so this then feeds into the next wave of public spirited issues, and then which prompts more actions, which can reuse these materials and generate more materials, and so on. So Sukhav Zero is, is not really a, a group. It's not really a um, unit or a organization. It is just this flow of uh, participation that are accumulative over time. And so uh, let's talk a little bit about the process or the methodology that we use for community uh, organization. Our methodology uh, revolves around the most visible part, which is the process. All the process of how to run a hackathon, how to run a project, how to join the hack folder, how to use our collaborative documents, all these are in the public and collaborative maintained in the commons. Over time, we have principles that are basically um, the repeated process, the best practices that somehow um, people feel or think that are conductive to the future processes and that's worth keeping, like our code of conduct and things like that. But these are not immutable. These are not set in stone. And most importantly, these are born out of repeated processes. So when we repeat this into the process, the process may change and the principles may change also because this is also a community maintained. And out of the uh, repeated exercise of those principles, we establish some values some shared values, which I'll share with you. But let's first start it with the process. Um, for example, for each hackathon, we maintain collaborative documents. We make sure that instead of using things like Wikipedia or uh, content management systems like Drupal, which are what we call asynchronous, which means that I make a revision and this revision belongs to me, and then you make another revision and that revision belongs to you. And maybe I want to revert your revision and so on. Instead of this batch like process, we use a collaborative document where everybody can type at the same time. And <clears throat> what this does is this makes the idea of ownership dilute sufficiently that people feel that we co-own this document. Nobody really is an author. Uh, instead, of, we are all collaborators in this document. And this is what we call collaborative tools. And around the collaborative tools, like around one particular project's hackpad, we will have chat rooms on Telegram, on Freenode, on Slack, that then uh, creates maybe a channel and the channel basically is also non-exclusive. Everybody can join. And then to make this uh, visible work much better in a way that's uh, asynchronous, meaning I can type something and then throw out some idea. And maybe I'm not yet ready to put it into this document. So I'll just ask for people's input. And then people at their own leisure can provide their input. And then after viewing this public visible document, um, people may make it into something useful, like a website or an app or things like that, which draws more people, which may want to provide input. So this comes full circle. We provide a way for people to provide their input. And instead of you know just saying, uh, we are the maintainer team, anyone who provides input automatically becomes one of the uh, collaborators. 
And then so this flow again continues. So the most important thing is that this is all visible to everybody, visible to the public. And it's easy to verify. It's very easy through our logbot interface that maintains a log of exactly what people have said and which person contributed which line or which words even in a collaborative document. And so all contributions are visible and yet uh, the entire project does not belong to any particular person. And so this is a highly dynamic process that we can then tailor to each project. And through this repeated practice, we have some values. Values are uh, the things that we roughly say, which is a um, good behavior that is conductive community, which is not so good behavior that may not be encouraged by the community. Usually, in traditional uh, civil society organizations, they revolve around common values and are somewhat um, suspicious or do not want collaborations from people who hold different values. But GovZero has a very interesting, what I mean, uh, process as commons. Value. And this, <clears throat> this value is extremely inclusive. This value basically just means we welcome everybody as long as they're welcome also of everybody else. And so it's a, um, a almost share-like value that says we don't exclude anyone as long as they're not exclusive of anyone else. So with this kind of what we may even call meta value, um, it is actually possible for people who hold different social values to work together and to bridge between these uh, inclusive values and this public uh, in the commons process is our principles. So these principles basically are like uh, heuristics, are like um, rules of thumb that makes it possible for us to make more um, inclusive values out of our daily practices. And so these principles are the things that we consolidate. So for a traditional NGO or for a um, traditional large government, um, the GovZero way of doing is mostly um, the process that draws people's attention. We may use very fancy tools, tools like um, a Kanban of cards, um, you know, Trello-like things. We may use um, cloud-hosted or even uh, secure um, communication channels. We may use a lot of very interesting collaboration tools. And, and all these tools and all those process that we use uh, and the playbooks that we produce alongside those tools are the ones that draws uh, people's attention from the government and from non-government organizations. However, um, it is not guaranteed that adopting those tools will provide the desired virtuous cycle effect that we um, treasure in the GovZero community because it takes experience of using those process and those tools in order to form the principles that are um, fit to the particular group of people, that is to say, to the NGO or to the government. And finally, of course, for the exclusionary uh, values and the uh, organizations that are built around those, it's extremely hard to flip overnight to an inclusive value. But it's okay. It will take time because it's culture we're talking about. So what we're saying is that um, we don't have to switch everybody's mindset to an abundance-based inclusive value. Um, this is maybe too difficult. However, it is possible to uh, keep in mind the principles that GovZero community use while introducing the processes so that we can build a bridge. So within the GovZero community, um, we actually adopt a lot of processes from the open source culture as well as from the larger software development community. All these collaborations, asynchronous, uh, remote work, version control, release early, release often, everything here, uh, broadly speaking, 
are the culture that are from the initial hacker community. And by this, I mean the creative hackers, um, the early hackers, uh, people like uh, Richard Stallman uh, and afterwards Linus Torvalds and Eric Raymond, who codifies a lot of these uh, ethics. And then afterwards, um, people like Lawrence Lessig and so on uh, expanded this so that it's not only about hardware and software and becomes the free culture movement. So Gov0 uh, started with a lot of processes that's born out of the free culture of the hacker community, of the agile development community. However, then we cater those processes into the specific situations we're into. For example, sufficient people want to make Gov0 Summit happen, but it is a international conference. And for an international conference, there's a lot of um, place-based um, task that needs some kind of task force. So it's not entirely online anymore, and it's not entirely um, completely inclusive anymore. We're completely inclusive on the recruitment stage, but then we ask people to commit their time uh, into making this kind of things happen. And then um, there's a lot of examples like that, which we try to be um, as inclusive as the situation allows and then constantly go back to examine that uh, situation to see whether we can be more inclusive in the future. And then out of those practices, we have principles. And the most important principle in Gov0 is rough consensus. And again, we, we did not invent this. This is um, actually the most important principle in the internet engineering community also. Um, the, the whole idea is that nobody can force anyone to do anything. But on the other hand, in a decentralized community, we still want people to move more or less um, in a way that's conductive to the health of the community. So while it's impossible to have mandates, while it's impossible to have laws and regulations, um, our alternative is to keep talking, is to keep raising flags if you see something that you think are out of norm, but other people may not. And then we talk and listen and listen more and then talk until we come to a rough consensus. And the whole point is that the process of reaching this rough consensus where nobody is 100% codified, it's not about the words that codifies those things, but about the places and the records so that people can follow those records and see how those consensus are made. So it's not about voting. It's not about who's most loud or who's most indignant. It's about what's the most reasonable, uh, the things that can convince most of people most of the time, not all the time, and certainly not immutable. And so if you're interested in this kind of um, what we call the rough consensus kind of decision making, there's uh, quite a few uh, documents referenced from the Wikipedia page, which by itself, the Wikipedia community also runs on a rough consensus principle. And then um, in addition to the bi-monthly large hackathon, there's a lot of smaller hackathons. Like every alternate month, there's a smaller hackathon called the Moedic Hackathon. But these are not the only two regular hackathons. Anytime, any project, like the Vita One project, uh, we have weekly hackathons. Anyone who wants to run a hackathon anywhere, we have a hackathon kit, um, and everybody can just run it. And then there's no uh, projects that are worthy or the projects that are not worthy. A project is worthy if and when people want to work on it. And when nobody wants to work on it, well, nobody works on it. It's still like if you break it, you keep both parts, right? It's all in the commons. It doesn't go away when the people shift their attention to do something else. And when people resume their attention, they can follow the discussion to pick up where it was left. It. So this is, you can be that nobody when nobody uh, maintains the project. So anyone who are public spirited, anyone who wants to adopt a hand-on imperative, anyone who release their uh, work in the commons 
can just say, okay, I work on Gov0. So Gov0 is so loosely coupled that anybody just can say, okay, I, I work on Gov0 project. And the good thing about this is that over time, we then have a code of conduct that explicitly lists the common case that uh, people would want to exclude other people or harass other people, and then explicitly say, we say no to these things, but it's not be just these things. We say no uh, by principle to anything that excludes systematically people from participation. And so um, this actually creates a lot of uh, friction in the beginning with the uh, mass media. The mass media usually would want to have a uh, spokesperson. The mass media is used to PR releases and um, press releases. And uh, the mass media is used to uh, what we call a, a central representative way, where if they have interviewed the chairperson or the spokesperson, and that person would speak to everybody involved. And so to explicitly say that, no, we're not like that. We say, everybody can say Gov0 is like this. But other people, they may agree, they may disagree. And again, uh, whether Gov0 is like this or is like that, there's no definite answer ever. Everybody, when participating, has a copy of Gov0 uh, in their own mind. And it does not matter what Gov0 is or is not. The, what matters is how do you expect or how do you wish the future will be and then act on it. And so even the media people um, have been incorporated into this culture. We would ask then uh, their questions to be made into the public in the comments. Instead of exclusive interviews, we would ask for the entire interview to be made public so that other media can also pick it up and use it. And instead of you know one person speaking for the Gov0 community, we encourage the journalists to participate in the Gov0 projects. And indeed, many did um, and incorporate Gov0 projects, visualization, and so on as part of their reporting. It's only after participation in the process can the media people understand the principles and values of how the Gov0 way of doing things. And the way, the value here, is the centralization. And to put it in very simple forms, it's try as hard as possible to not concentrate decision-making power on one or few people. Whenever someone concentrates too much decision-making power, that someone uh, in the Gov0 community usually are reminded or become self-aware uh, and then said, okay, I have too much concentrated power. I have to divest this power to other people, to more people, which is exactly why as soon as I uh, became the digital minister in Taiwan, I divested all the um, hackathons um, uh, organization duties that I have and uh, the maintaining of all the community infrastructure around the VTaiwan backend and so on to different uh, civil society people. And why this matters is that if I have concentrated too much power from the government, uh, from the civil society, and inevitably from the private sector, then I become the hub. And it would be a re-centralization of all the Gov0 projects that deals with these stakeholders. So by basically delegating and then uh, saying, instead of delegating, I don't even touch this anymore, uh, to different people in different sectors. What I'm basically saying is, um, if I you know, get hit by the bus tomorrow, if I make a bad decision, uh, it, it won't matter that much because Everybody is a center in the civil society, in the private sector, in the government, um, empowered with this way of doing things. Everyone can gather a different 
uh, group of people around this kind of uh, virtuous circle. And then, because all the output is in the public, to feed into each other's um, process and to each of the uh, participants' creations. And so, in addition to everybody is a center, a multi-center, what's even more important is everybody identifies with the value that everybody is a center among themselves. And so, this is not just decentralization, but then a re decentralization that makes everybody the center of their own work instead of blaming other people, instead of saying, uh, uh, you know, nobody makes any progress. People are willing to be that nobody and makes some process. And so the autonomy of the participants, the transparency of the participation, the constant struggle to lower the threshold, to lower uh, the entry barrier for people to contribute and collaboration across sectors. All these things are the key elements in the Gov Zero's uh, decentralization value. So it involves constant dialogue, conversations, and throwing out our old habits <laughs> and try to form new habits by incorporating good ideas and um, good methodologies from people who are very different with it. And so just keep having conversations with people with new ideas, incorporate those new ideas into your next conversations, and repeat. This is how the value gets built out of those community principles. And so a lot of uh, people see uh, GovZero participants um, as a, a new generation. Uh, empowered by this kind of collaborative values and to replace the old ways of doing things. However, um, people in the GovZero community um, not necessarily all agree with this kind of labeling. For us, as I said back in three years ago, I was still one of the old people who did things the old way. Um, I, for example, uh, did not think that we can make a dictionary out of hundreds or thousands of people. Uh, for example, I did not even understand that there are uh, stakeholders who may want to adopt the open source ethos, but who have never heard of the source code um, idea. So all this to me is new. Uh, my world before I joined Gov0 uh, are restricted in the uh, way that I care about a society that I'm good at, and there were no systematic way for me to meet every week with people that I have no idea who, who are doing, and then get to know them, and then get to listen to them, and then share our visions, and so on, uh, and then participate in an inclusive community. So what, what, what I mean is there's no um, transition point, there's no point of, okay, so we, we throw out the old ways, and we adopt the new ways. Instead, uh, it's through participation to hackathons like this one, where we gradually form the new ways of working things. And these are interesting, not because they are new, but because these respond to the actual needs of the people who are meeting for the first time, or for the second time, or for the third time, who have something that they care in common. So this is the idea of iteration. And this is an idea of a work in progress that's forever. And so the next time if you see um, a project that's making very little progress, a, a project that seems stagnant, um, ask not where it's at. Maybe it's very far from completion. And then ask not what's its velocity. Maybe it's moving very slowly. Instead, ask what's its acceleration. What's, um, there's a joke, what's the um, dinosaur that's even more powerful than a velociraptor? Um, and the joke goes that it's the acceleroraptor. Because the idea is that no matter how slow a project is moving, just by contributing your attention, your time, and in a way that is recurrent, 
that goes every month, every two months, every week, it will accelerate. And it is the acceleration that we care about. Because in the end, it is not about any given point in time. It is about whether it is possible to sustain this kind of work. And the sustainability lies in each and every one of us' commitment to accelerate each other's process and progress. And so this is um, actually the punchline of the economic uh, boosting up plan. Uh, everything is accelerating. So um, I hope you all the best in accelerating each other's visions and build some new ways, uh, some new process and release it in the commons so that we can learn from it and then make new principles and then add to the values that we all share. Thank you so much.